And then the last chapter, like most books, is living with a hostage-free state of mind. It's basically a summary of all the concepts. And um, he talks about, um, first, um, I'll just kind of hit him, review him. High self-esteem, why it's important. Um, what, how low self-esteem undermines, uh, undermines um, bonding. Um, and then he talks about boosting your self-esteem. And um, he covers points like, and I'll give you five points, cultivate self-awareness, accept what you cannot change, make friends with your inner voice, celebrate yourself and get help from others. And they're all basic important things that people often don't think in terms of their communication and their um, relationships at work. Um, the following three areas are areas you can focus on to enhance your lifelong learning, overcoming your fears, learning to do new things and learning to let go. Out of those, my biggest problem is learning to let go. So that's that's my little that's my my struggle of choice. Anyway, and uh, so let's apply this um, with some examples. So one of the examples um, I think we talked about before we started the recording we talked about um, sometimes the relationship between training and HR. And it's an interesting relationship. First of all, HR is not, in, in terms of executive power, HR is not usually a strong position. Not a lot of individuals that are in HR end up running in the company. So they're not a strong position. It's one of the reasons that HR and training get cut a lot. So in terms of power positions, doesn't happen. Finance is a power position. Sales is a power position. Um, sales brings in the income. Finance counts the money. You know, those are the power areas. HR isn't always it. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of uh, people, and this is in the 80s and 90s, it really started to get a momentum that one guy said he would just, he, if he could get rid of, if he could get rid of the, um, HR department, he would. So, sorry, that was my son. I told him I'd call him back. So, um, and, and I think there's a little bit. So, what does that do to HR? If HR, if, if this is a perception of HR, and if HR knows people or has a feeling that people feel this way about HR, what's the impact for HR? What, what are some of the consequences and the experiences HR might have? Um, participation. Chime in. Yeah, Shall everybody we? chime in. Um, so I actually want to uh, go back to something you said and then uh, answer the question. I do, um, from what I've seen, like I do agree that uh, yes, you know, HR doesn't end up in the running usually, um, but I've worked at companies where um, the HR has a lot of power. Um, and um, mm, I think, mm, in fact, I guess sharing uh, something like in recent uh, research, I saw by the talent, uh, Town Development Institute or something by Mark Efron um, and they had done a survey and it said that I guess yes you don't see a lot of uh, CHROs going into CEO positions um, because the, and the main reason was they are actually not interested so um, maybe it's a little bit of my bias too and um, not that I'm like a big fan of HR you know I don't like the word but I think as someone who's done HR and then like you know then wanted to get into organizational development so hopefully I can be more on the uh, developmental side rather than the compliance disciplinary side um, I would hope I don't know if it's by change of wording or you know having the conversation around um, 
how it could really be a strategic partner could change that you know and really be of more of a progressive added value so good yeah so that's um so i want to say that and then as far as i uh, you said what is your uh, what do you think this experience creates uh, you know when they're not appreciate maybe they don't necessarily always have a seat at the table uh, what how does that make hr feel or how you know and um, about their experience um i've i've seen that too uh, maybe not necessarily not being involved but not being regarded highly uh, and um i mean you know i've i've worked under hr department so i it's just for for me it's always when i've been in a position and i've tried to advertise it as more of a developmental strategic this is operational hr like recruiting payroll whatever and then you have like you know the strategy that should help uh, align with your business strategy to help you get there and we're there to let you know you know if there's a legal area that yes you want to do this but you know we can't exactly but how else can we think about it um yeah so i don't know i don't i guess I think in cases that I've worked at places that maybe it wasn't highly regarded, um, it's bothersome, you know, you don't want to be looked at as paper pusher and it kind of separates you. Like, I think also like the experiences of being in HR kind of makes it hard for uh, under the HR department to be your authentic self sometimes. And no matter what, you know, you're, it, you may not always be as in, quote unquote. So that that's my perspective and, you know, my experience with it. That's great. That's great. And I, I love being provocative. So I always like, I'll take a position so that somebody can counter it. It's great. You're doing fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's great. And you're so gentle, you know. I try. <laughs> I try. Oh I love, yes, I also love I love a good discussion. Um, uh, it's not necessarily even a debate. It's just a, a matter of expressing oneself. And I love going down where people can just voice how they're feeling and where they're coming from emotionally and, and their experiences they've had. And they can make just these, you know, like here's here's what it is, here's the picture. And they paint, they paint a black hat and a white hat and then this is, these are the good guys, these are the bad guys. I love those kinds of discussions. So great, this is good. Sure, thank you. So um, I, a couple of questions. So the companies where you found HR is strong, um, you've already indicated that they're more proactive, they're not focused on um, um, just pushing the paper, they're focused on developing people and that's, is that, did I hear that correctly? That's where the HR is strong or no? Or, or what, are there any qualities in which you would find strong HR in a company? Are they American companies? Are they foreign companies? Like I believe the European companies, HR is much more um, overall, statistically, I would say they're much more respected over in Europe than they are in the United States where we, there's often a, um, um adversarial relationship within the organization that's a great uh point uh, that you just um pointed out like um the company where uh hr was very strong as far as their presence um at on the table and at the organization or at the table um, was a new zealand based company um however a lot of it had to do with the personality of the um, HR director as well. And I'm not gonna say good or bad, sometimes <laughs> it may be very forceful, but making sure they go, you know, they're there, they've got a seat. And, um, and then 
I think um, so definitely you have a great point about that. And then um, the more progressive was from my own experience, or I guess that's more of what I've seen at um, a lot of startups um, that they really kind of get the concept of being more progressive. And yes, you need someone to kind of let you know about like your workforce planning and um, like, you know, how you develop your people or, okay, well, we need to uh, get rid of someone for X, Y, Z reason. Like, have we tried these things? Like, where have you, you know, just kind of more of a, really like a practitioner, like doing an assessment and okay, like, yes, if this has to happen or whatnot. But yeah, and someone that like brings those to the table, but also has um, the uh, f fundamental understanding of like employment law and things like that. And I think like where I worked as um, actually like the head of HR for this startup, um, I really advertised it. I didn't, uh, you know, when they were deciding titles, I was like, I. I'm sorry, but like HR just sounds really old school, like, you know, so I, I actually we named it like uh, talent, uh, talent department, uh, just because I think, you know, everyone that comes into an organization has some sort of talent. That's exactly how I described it to them. They have some sort of talent. If they're not being as engaged or if um, you know we're seeing performance issues, so we need to kind of get down to it. Did we select the right people? Like, did we uh, have we done like? Of course, you know you got to look at that individual as well. But really, just kind of being responsible as a human, like you know, okay, this is a talent. Okay, if I can't utilize it best in this role, maybe I can utilize it. Maybe this person is really good in this it would be do well in this position like so it, i'm putting people where they can really flourish so um that's that's how i um and it was a very sales heavy organization actually i gotta say um so uh, but we got along yeah we got along i think it's sometimes it was uh, hard to you know when the ceo wants to be really like i just want to hire people and or just get rid of this uh, like person i don't like them then it was there were the times that you know oh, if they're not meeting the numbers you know they need to go well <laughs> okay let's sit down <laughs> uh, yeah but no in general like it was a very positive experience and within a very short period of time i could really see a good shift uh, in this startup going from a um really just kind of they they were over the initial phase they were kind of going more to into the e, uh, teenage stage uh, so they were they needed someone like more corporate but also like uh friendly and you know like someone that uh, fits in the culture um so i really tried to in my conversations um kind of brand myself as someone that hey i'm here to make sure you are succeeding or if you know something is happening like you know we can discuss i'm not here to write you up or what stuff but if it doesn't you know if it doesn't oh well like you know these are the guidelines let's you know unfortunately we'd have to but that's the last resort <laughs> that's excellent that's excellent so this is good this is good cindy you want to jump in right there She's on mute. You're muted. Self muted. Okay. So you just interrupt me if something comes up because we're, we're, this is great. I love this. This is so good, Nisha. Doing great. And you're really, oh. you know, I tell you, if I was perspective, if, if, when this video shows, if I was perspective hired, I would hire you in a second. This is really oh, good. thank you. That means the world. <laughs> is my, my video actually is going to be shown too? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna. It's I should have been wearing like a button up, you know, that was kind of a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is great, this is great. But so, thank you, I really appreciate it too. It's been since like probably since grad school that I've really had a chance to really discuss some things with someone and, you know, and hear their perspective and their experience because, you know, you come in with a lot of great experience. So it's, you know, it's definitely. Uh, great and refreshing to hear that. 
Yeah, and I truly believe the world is what you make it. So, so um, you know, my cousin, uh, Bettina, so she's just a, she's a powerhouse. I mean, she was, I remember when she got, she was just a powerhouse on a kid. So um, uh, my dad came from Switzerland when he was 22. So, you know, half the family was over in Switzerland. So she speaks four languages fluently. Um, and she is just smart as a whip. And so she was HR for a, a software, huge software company. And she would just speak her mind. So she she was the actual, the antithesis from everything I described from, from HR um, in terms of it. And she was she was all about talent development. And that's one of the reasons I really like what um, Tony did with shifting from training to talent development. Like and um, she was all about taking the leadership and she was taking the managers and the directors and and crafting for them their career through the organization and having discussions and coaching on where they were strong and what they needed help on and how they struggled with stuff and um, what kind of training they did. And in that function, besides the fact that she's, um, she's got a real legal mind, so she was able to um, organize all of their um, protocols and procedures and take their, um, you know, take their uh, company policy book, which is this that can cut it down to this because it was just so much clearer. So she was really great on that. And then um, I was meeting Jim in Boston and he had a client coming in from uh, Germany and um, they were involved in, again, they didn't call it HR, they called it talent development. And it was the same yeah. focus. Our job is about helping, finding out what people want, matching what the company needs, and having discussions about what's really important, where they talk about the real issues. And I, that needs to go on more. And to do that, this is where George's book comes in. You, um, if you are in an environment where that isn't the case within the organization, because there's a lot of fear in the organization, mm -hmm. the first thing you do is you have to create a safe environment so that people can openly discuss something and um, have healthy conflict. Yes. It's really important. Yeah, uh, you know, I read another, um, I remember I read a book in uh, grad school actually. I, um, I really don't remember the name. It was something about like um, five, uh, I remember there was a pyramid and it was about uh, like trust and where it came in and um, how it plays an important role in uh, leadership and for like, you know, conflict uh, resolution and things like that. Uh, it was a great, I, I listened to it in an audiobook and it's, it's great. And um, that's what he was saying. Like, for instance, before reading that, I myself always thought like it's, best to make sure things come don't come to the point where there's conflict and um in that book it was describing that a healthy organization is one where there is conflict but there's the trust that uh you know we're gonna go at it i'll say my opinion you'll say your opinion it may get even a little heated but there's that trust that we all have like the best interest of the organization yeah. or even each other in mind and we can hash it out and even if it's for two days like we're uh sort of uh, um you know maybe things just are awkward or whatever but we can really take time to process it and then come back stronger and um, so that's great that you're saying that about this book because um i think it is it is very true and it is very important well a um, long time ago in my career um um i uh, so I'd had a company and I sold sold my company and I was going into the financial market and I wanted to kick things around for six months. And this other company hired me short term to because they had an opening. And during that time, the VP of sales was um, put together a new compensation plan. And the new compensation plan was based on a product they hadn't introduced. So they cut the commissions for the products the guys were selling. And they were delaying it for the, uh, and the uh, new product hadn't been tested and wasn't coming out. And I literally in the meeting said, 
this is really a dumb idea. I mean, you're really just hacking their things. And I don't think anybody in this room is going to tell you that. And when I got out, the um, the directors get, what? How could you say that to him? I mean, aren't you worried? Because he's a guy and a guy that'll just take you out for that. I said, well, first of all, I'm not worried about it. Second of all, if you can't speak up and tell him about it, are, what, what are you guys going to do? Tell me honestly, what are you guys going to do with that announcement? And they all said, we're looking for new jobs. We're going to leave. I said, okay, so who's helping the company more? You who are going to leave? I mean, you've got to tell them it's a dumb idea. So, uh, and the company didn't last, didn't last more than another year. I mean, the, the VP, it was, he, he had, he, he just didn't get it. Horrible yeah. VP. Horrible. And so uh, when you said that, that was a dumb idea, I'm sorry, I lost you. Was but, it the VP of sales or HR? No, to the VP of sales. To the oh, VP okay. of sales. So conflict is not to HR, and and I didn't say it as it's a dumb idea that way. I just it's just, basically that was the underlying message. I I, I went through a series of questions. It still oh, came. I like that. I class. like that. That's that's kind of that's sort of my approach usually. <laughs> but it, I it still, in your, in your it still unveiled it as a really stupid idea when he answered the question. So. I mean, it was pretty obvious the guy just looked like he didn't know what he's doing. He didn't. He really didn't. I, I couldn't believe that he was in that position. Um, um, and, and uh, you know, the old saying is you're you're promoted up to your to your level of complete incompetence. So um, and I thought, yep, for him, it, it kind of worked. So interesting. And, you know, but um, and I think this kind of goes with what we're discussing about. Uh, uh, you know, being HR or like, let's take like learning and development where I've worked is always, or most companies, I think it's usually under HR. Some, some companies have it under, like, they have an education department that's separate. And, um, I think it would be really nice one to hopefully kind of for H people that are in human resources to demonstrate the type of behavior that really, um, you know, it's not like, oh, I can let you go. And I can, you know, some, some, because some people in HR really enjoy that. They like, you know, kind of walking around and having people be afraid, you know, right? Right. <laughs> um, and, you know, but really, but there are some that really uh, kind of care about the company and you know want to get the best things for the employees as well so uh, I think it would be nice to just kind of like through having these discussions and kind of that's why I was like at the beginning well hey I'm sorry but you know HR could be this too <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think what bothers me as well is that um, regardless um, I've never worked outside of the HR department, no matter what role I've been. And um, I can never speak like that, you know? Like, and I know you didn't use the word dumb, but um, it's just like some things truly bother me. And I even try to bring it up with some gentleness or be like, well, have you considered this? instead or uh, what you know how would you feel about oh i can help out if we want to do you know so just kind of very gently very, but um it usually hasn't worked to my favor a lot of times sometimes yes um even maybe i see other top executives maybe very interested but um I don't know, in the end, like, yeah, whereas, like, I know I have a friend who is in sales and he's like, oh, I say whatever I want because I'm in sales and I'm in top performer in the nation, uh, like, amongst whatever his ranking is. And, you know, they can't afford to lose me. And it's true. Yeah. And and that's a power base. And, and so you salespeople have a tendency when they're the top person in the company, they get to be, uh, they can they can voice themselves. And it's a it's a position that sometimes can go awry and they can become a real prima donna. And then they're just serving their own ego. 
um, which isn't good for the organization. It's not good for the sales team or anything else. Um, and companies will put up with it. You know, I actually, I have a, I have a, I think sort of an interesting story about what you just mentioned. <laughs> but uh, let's, we can go on with. No, no, this is great. Let's oh, okay. I want to make sure. Okay, so I, about that. Um, so at this organization uh, that I was working as the head of HR, um, and as I said, it was very sales heavy. Uh, we had someone that was bringing in, I think, about thirty k per month in uh, commission, and um, they and had. Where, where, where were they positionally? Do you mind if I interrupt? Where were they positioned? Were they the top salesperson? Yes. Yes. Okay. And um, they, so this person, uh, and the company had them on, like uh, their uh, their they were like on the phone, like their sales reps, um, uh, like hourly. They weren't on salary for their base uh, compensation, and um, so this person, like one of the big reasons, you know, the first things that I needed to focus on was uh, compliance with clocking in and clocking out. And this person apparently uh, was the one that would not do it. And different people had talked to him and he would just not do it. And um, so, and when I joined the organization, they didn't really at the beginning, like make an announcement, oh, we have this person. So like mm, some people knew some people, like I had to go around and uh, just introduce myself, whatnot. And, um, and it was at the, I think probably within a few weeks in, and I looked and I was like on ADP and I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah, shoot, like, yeah, they, they really don't uh, clock in and out. So I tried to uh, approach him one time at the end of business day. And um, this is a little, this is more of a sales conversation maybe, but, and it was like, you know, and I look, I'm young, you know, so, and I think he probably thought, okay, and I'm kind of like petite, you know, and, and uh, so he probably thought like, oh, this young girl, like this young chick, like, you know, <laughs> so uh, I was like, hey, uh, and he's like, oh, hey, like, uh, did I see you at the Christmas party? And, you know, so he was going, <laughs> and I'm like, oh. He was going one way, he was going left, and you were going right. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, uh, oh, hi. Um, yeah, I was there. I didn't see you. And anyhow, so we ended up, um, you know, I, uh, I introduced myself and, you know, he was kind of like, oh, so like, how long ago did you join? And, and I was like, uh, yeah, it's, it's been pretty recent. So, and um, I told him about my role in talent and I was like, so I wanted to talk to you about something like, um, uh, I've heard and I know your name is always on the board and um, you're doing great. Um, however, mm, something that I wanted to address is that, um, uh, you know, with me coming in and stuff like we want to make sure there's compliance on uh, as far as like clocking in and out and uh, I know it can get difficult like uh, like or you guys sometimes don't end up going to lunch or whatnot but um, I would really I think you know moving forward let's uh, make sure that's happening more and I'm saying this because again I know you're doing great and um, but it's something that you know I'm Kind of putting the word out there we're gonna we're sending a memo and uh if it doesn't happen we're gonna have i'm gonna have to document it and you know and you know who wants that you know and you're already doing so well in something larger like this is so easy for you you know <laughs> so anyhow we end up having and at the beginning he was kind of like uh oh you know i'm kind of being like very arrogant and stuff um but um interestingly enough uh he's i noticed he started clocking out and then like little by little like uh, he was so different like a couple of times later i see him and like before he would just roll in in front of me to talk to let's say the vp of sales or something even if i was and then he's like oh excuse me ma'am like uh, yes there you go like uh and yeah, so he started, um, really, yeah, or like, oh, I'm so sorry, don't like, you know, I, I didn't write, uh, I, I forgot, you know. So I think there is a work, as you said, there is the ego there, but 
you know, you got, hopefully you come in with that influence and, you know, the being able to relate and build the bond, as you were saying, and, um, you know, approach it so you can get the results. So that's a great example of you succeeding in doing that. No, thank you. <laughs> so, you know what, um, you should do that more often. <laughs> sure, no. within my next within my next role, hopefully, <laughs> when that comes around. So, um, uh, uh, a colleague of mine is is a partner. Um, he was working HR for um, uh, he's director of HR for a large um, pharmaceutical company on the East Coast, um, and uh, he's just retired. And um, I used to love talking to him because he was so good at his job. And they, the company absolutely loved him. Now, wow. And he really, um, except the company would do things like they sent him, he had to go to this meeting in, I don't know, it was, uh, I think he ended up, it was somewhere in India. He had to go to a meeting. They booked him on the cheapest. He had to do like six transfers. It took like, 26 hours it was ridiculous they must have bought the cheapest ticket they could and he was very accepting of whatever the company give so in in that case you know i was like you know if you don't ask you don't get you they shouldn't have done that to you first of all he was tired for the meeting it made it more difficult he got sick when he got back okay. because he was he didn't get he doesn't you know he, He's, 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 he's not used to traveling and stuff. Um, one of his favorite lines that I've always remembered, he says, hey, my job here is to land the plane safely. And, and I said, well, what do you mean like that? He said, my job is just to help land the plane safely. If there's a problem, my job is to make sure the company is protected and the employees protected. If there's conflict between employees, my job is try and mitigate it and help them get along and help arrange that. So he was a master at what he did, only he didn't take care of himself on it. And he he, he absolutely still loved working for the company. He, he probably could have been making three times the amount of money that they were paying him on it. Yeah. So, um, and it, it just but wasn't. Just wanted to, uh, yeah, I like how he described it. I really do. And um, yeah, but I think he was maybe trying to uh, make it plan super safely. He didn't want to shake the boat a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, and and he didn't. He wouldn't. He would. He was one of the most patient listeners in the world. So the way I started this conversation, I would do that to him all the time, and and I would I would just try and get him engaged on something, or just try and find an edge where he would come back and say, "No, this isn't the case. This is." He never, I could never do it. So finally, um, I just gave up. I just gave up trying because it was, you know, I, I couldn't get him to like rah, engage on that. Interesting. But that's that's actually quite the skill. That's that's uh, that's emotional intelligence too. Oh, and it's an application of emotional intelligence too. Yeah. In terms of it. So um it, it's excellent done. High self aware. Uh, he had high self awareness, awareness of others, and he managed others very, very well. It was it was it was a pleasure to watch. So. Yeah, I don't know if if I get passionate about something, <laughs> I like I wouldn't go crazy, but I would voice <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> I think that's good too. See, that's more like so between the my cousin is that way very passionate about stuff she uh, she's always been in the high end um she's always uh, at the she's always in the c-suite and she she walked out of one job out of some company it's like you'd never why would you leave that company and she just she was talking and they wouldn't listen to her and she asked again and they wouldn't listen to her she just stormed out she had a, she had another job making um more money and more perks three days later so they and they love her up in the san francisco area she just mm. um the culture hard. She, hard got to, there's nobody even like her on that stuff so that's good stuff so anyway that's what george is talking about george is talking about we need self-awareness and we also need awareness of others where um we try and create a safe environment for them 
Yeah, that's all. Awesome. I think something I could probably improve on is uh, accepting things you can't change. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> you, you got to be true to your nature too. You, you, so you, you, otherwise you're not you. Otherwise you're not you. That's true, but um, I pick your you battle. Know, being quite frank is that now going back to the main conversation hr is really there to protect the company that's where the paycheck comes from but uh, sometimes you see kind of more beneficial way to do things mm -hmm. that don't have to hurt people and exactly. benefit your you know and i think i just get so mm, kind of in, from inside fired up Right. Why? Why do you have to do it this way when you could do it so much uh, in such a better way, where it would be less harmful? Yeah. Or how? How do you not care? Right. You right. So yeah. Um. And um. You just there are different personalities in the world. I mean, you know, I'm I my the thing that it goes off in my head is okay. Do I do I have the time? Do I want? Is this okay? Out of all the things that are going on, is this the battle I want to pick? So that's a decision that's constantly going in my head. That's good advice. Actually, somebody else uh, that you know was more seasoned as well. <laughs> that's what they told me. Like, do I want to get stuck in this or just you know kind of let it go? How would how much would it matter in uh, the whole perspective once this thing is done, or you know whether it's a project or what might not you know so. Well, and it's very important. I don't think companies realize the consequence of the way they do things. And this is how you get these these terrible cultures in organizations that are just prevent them from being as good as they could be. Um, I so, and you know, jobs um, uh, don't like what he did with the people. He got them to do things though that they never would have done before. Was it always beneficial? No, absolutely not. Um, a neighbor up the street works with um, Elon Musk. Oh, nice. And, uh, you know, Elon Musk to me is a genius in what he does and is always driving forward. And I, I, I can imagine he's extremely difficult to work for. So, um, and, you know, that's generally confirmed when the neighbor walks by and goes, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Elon's going to look at this so the neighbor's not in, in danger. <laughs> <laughs> he may, you know, he may not he never may know. Be some yeah. talent development stuff. So um, well, we always learn from our mistakes. And, and one of them, um, so to me, it was hilarious the whole time. It was, I was just, um, I didn't have a lot of um, skin in the game only. And it was more of a, uh, I felt like I was an out-of-body experience during this entire process. So um, uh, 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 somebody I'd, I'd done a numerous um, assignments for called me out of the blue um, with a new organization um, she was with and said, we need to fill in really quick to do this assignment. I need you to talk to the um, instructional designer. And... Um, uh, go over the program and I need you to fly out in like two days and go deliver the program. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was, okay, we'll do it real quick. So I talked to the instructional designer and um, the whole purpose of this was to give background for a hospital in the Midwest in the Windy City. Um, uh, so they would fill out this form more completely, both to protect the hospital also, though, more importantly, though, to supply better information with better um, double checks mm -hmm. for the patient record. So they changed this form. And that's all the class was about was doing this form. And they had gone up because they also wanted to incorporate the culture and why it was important because they felt that, you know, if you give them the why yes. and tell them why this is important, they'll learn. Exactly. So. The instructional designer goes, oh, yeah, well, I talked to the um, the uh, director of HR who, who did the program. And we've done this program. Uh, we did this program before. And, he, and 
the instructional design set. We need to change it though. We in the first draft we did it, we introduced the form at the end. So they do the entire class without oh, seeing the form. And then at the very end they did it. And he goes, it just and it was it was the director of HR's idea and it just didn't come off. It didn't go and I'm going, no, that's it's just that doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. So he goes, so I've I I've talked to her about it and we're and we've agreed to change it. So you can introduce the form in the front. And so we we talked about that. And you know, there wasn't any documentation of this. The instructional designer had basically written out the course. There's no instructor information or anything. So that's why we had to have the conversation. The he um the person who designed it was also supposed to be delivering it, and they had delivered the first one. They couldn't do it because they had a conflict. So in comes Jeffrey. So we had this meeting. <laughs> so I land, everything's fine. Big, huge classroom. It must've been uh, 45, 50 people in the classroom. They were all there. And I arrive and they all look at me like death because they're just looking at me like, you know how when you get in and they're just going, oh God, another training. And I don't want to go through this the the vibe in the place was so bad i just i thought oh god this is going to be this is not this is going to be a tough day i think you knew you can turn it around oh so well i you know so i started doing things and moving around and start turning around and i'm feeling hate from the back of the room and from the back of the room it's the director of hr and so we have our first, so we go, um, uh, we go, we hit the first break and she goes, I need to speak to you. Oh. And so I go, what did I step in? So we go out in the hallway. She goes, you've introduced the form. Yeah, I've introduced the form. You're not supposed to introduce the form. And I, now I have a choice. Okay. Do I throw the instructional designer? I said, oh, I, I'm sorry. The, the communication I got, I, I thought you would communicate to them. We're going to do the, no, we're not going to do that. You need to put the form away. We're not, I don't want you talking about the rest of the class. And I said, okay, we have five minutes before I have to go back in class and I have to go to the bathroom. You want me to magically make the form disappear? And she goes, yes, we're just, I don't want them to talk about it. You're going to talk about the cons. Well, it doesn't work that way. And I hear you. What is your concern? So I started asking her all these questions. That's not the way I wanted it done. That's not the way I had done. I said, well, they seem to be enjoying it. Don't you think? <gasps> I said, well, look, I have to go to the bathroom and then I'll come back and then, um, I'll see what I can do. So I kind of didn't, I stopped emphasizing the form and I started talking about it and immediately hand goes up. Well, what, how does that go on the form? <laughs> so I look at her and I thought, you know what? So I just winked at her and went, yep, okay. So I went right back to doing what I did the whole day. She stormed out of there at the lunch hour and she did not come back the rest of the afternoon. Meanwhile, the person that was the organization that had gotten this contract was also in the class. The, so the salesperson, and she is just in the back. She's going, why did you do that? I said, hey, there's no way to make it disappear. And I tried and they asked a question. So we just went with it. I said, look, it's a better class. And um, the, the, the HR director showed up at the end. It goes, um, I want those evaluations. I said, okay, except first, I want a copy of those evaluations before you take them. So the marks were great. They loved the class. They understood it. It was better. Um, they'd heard things about the other. Some even said, oh, we'd heard things about the other class and there was some confusion. This was so much clearer, blah, 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 blah. So I got, I, I made them photocopy. Uh, I, I, the client said, when we got in the car, she goes, you know, you're not going to be asked back. I said, absolutely. I know I'm not, you know? Yeah. So, so for me, it was hilarious because she wasn't interested in their experience. She wasn't interested in the outcome. She was interested in it being her way. 
And she really did not understand how people learn. And she did not understand. And to this day, I tried to follow up with everyone to get an answer on why she was so fixated on that. And nobody could give me a straight answer. And nobody would talk to her. And they did the class the other way. They went right back to the other way the, the next time. Oh, really? You know what? Mm, unfortunately, um, you know, what you, that was a great story. And thank you for sharing because um, it, it, it's, um, it, it helps me uh, to, you know, just kind of seeing how some other people uh, would deal with a situation like that. And um, it, I think it was easier for you because you were going in as a consultant or as an outsider, obviously, to be able to be like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, do it or whatnot. But um, unfortunately, that has been my experience where people, um, you know, do things a certain way. And yes, they're not even open to hearing what might be better or even if they know there's a better way they don't want to look um they, they the insecurity they don't want to look incompetent so they're gonna go with i've i come across i've came across that a lot and um i think i'm trying to think if it's been within hr only but i but the thing is and no, I think just sometimes, you know, it could be the CEO as well. And um, it's unfortunate, but, you know, again, being under HR, I've, I've seen that a lot of times, just with authority. Mm. And, and part of it, you know, to her, you know, in trying to understand her and why she would be that way, I have a feeling she's not well respected I am at her at the director level. I have a feeling they don't really listen to her. And I have a feeling that she's, this is, it's it's all fear-based for her. Yes, and yes. For her, the thought of not being able to control this environment, which she's assigned to, terrifying yeah. for her. And so the idea is how to help. And in that case, you know, as I look back on, even though I'm saying this is the way it was, and was, I still have not come up with, how that could have been handled differently so from my end and so that's always the struggle too is is we have that's where the self-awareness comes in what could you have differently and i'm sure there is somebody out there that could have managed that differently so that it was a better experience for everyone involved for her and helped her learn so in that case i was not able to help her learn all i did was take a position um, and decide. And the, the only decision I can make is I have two clients here. I have her and yes, she's paying the bill and I have the students. So I just decided I'm delivered to the student. So that was, I saw it as a binary decision. So I delivered to the students. And, you know, hmm. and as you pointed out clearly, um, I didn't, you know, it was an extra thing. It wasn't like I was putting, I wasn't risking a job. I wasn't risking, I was risking future work, but it, you know, there's always plenty of that. I uh, wasn't risking that. I wasn't risking a reputation anywhere. I wasn't risking anything else. Um, she obviously, you know, it was easy to see from the circumstance. You know, that's great that you know you're so honest about how you think or it's a self-awareness that you're like you know this was my approach um but however i also feel like uh to give yourself you know to give you more credit for it because you're being very humble about it I don't know, I don't think I'm being biased or maybe I cannot necessarily think of another situation, but given that you didn't have uh, any prior like uh, meet and greet or communication or whatever uh, with her, uh, like where you guys kind of, you sat down and talked about how this was going to be done, you just landed, you went to the place and you started doing your thing, you know? And, um, so I don't see how, so the bond also wasn't there either. 
Correct. Applying what we've learned today, or I've learned today. Exactly. Very good. <laughs> and uh, so in that case, and I've worked with someone like how you're describing. I have. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, <laughs> more than once, but, um, but it's great. And, you know, I think for me, just being internal, just got to be cautious and manage that. And, you know, sometimes I wouldn't really question certain things or, okay, like, <laughs> sorry, it'll be, it'll be this way or whatnot. But um, so, but what I did like is, but if you think about it, you did try to adjust your approach when you went back. So you did take a, 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 that stakeholder's uh, opinion into account and it just the flow was such that it didn't probably allow uh, it was it would have been tough to really continue on that path but i think you held true as we were talking about authenticity you held true to your standards and to your true being that i'm here and the outcome is uh, you know i want to do this right to help these people and they're asking for it. You got the cues, and uh, this is um, and and you know you have and you kind of had authority. Yes, they they employ you for that thing, but you kind of had authority because you know you, you've had the expertise. You show in, uh, you show up as the expert, and you could get the evaluations. You know, and yeah, you didn't care if you know she liked it or not because it was effective. The results were there and she's gonna hear it so i don't know i i think i think you really tried but i you know i think your sense of more morale moral was higher which i i like yeah. that you were right. you know and that's that's the challenge right. i think in working in corporation sometimes a lot of times i feel like that's the challenge of you know how much I have not yet found a business where, um, you know, you can be, or I've never worked for one, or where you can be completely uh, good morale or, you know, morals. And then, so yeah. sometimes, yeah, but you had the advantage of uh, yeah. being able to deliver well and, yeah. Well, one of the things you identified was the bonding didn't occur. So, actually that's you know i think um one of the lessons to take away from that because you've drawn attention to it would be to start the class it would have been better to start the class late and take 15 20 minutes to bond with her and even though she didn't set it up that way should have almost taken the time to do it just to do it even just a quick double check this is by the way this is what we're doing and to the point the guy the instructional designer said we did it this way last time that's almost telling you um maybe you should double check whenever you hear something's changed that definitely should make you perk up and go okay i want to verify this and usually i do so um i didn't in that case so in that case, those those two things could have been done better on my part. Mm, yeah, I mean, I see that. I think you look if you want to look at it from a like you kind of pick and choose your battles. You didn't mind if it, there wasn't continued business from there for or for as long as that person is there. But I think for your reputation, you did the right thing, yeah. you know, yeah. and well, for your personal brand. So. Uh -huh you're very kind you're very kind no, it's it's true and uh the results showed it and you yes you didn't agree with her but you you help the organization and those people i and, wish there were more people on this i think this is great oh uh, thank you then i wouldn't have been able to talk as much <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't. I, Cindy, but I, I would love to hear more. You know, other people's experiences and stuff as well. Oh, this is good. This is good. So our book next week is called Territorial Games by Annette Simmons. I and, can't. Wait. Oh, it's. Have you read that? 
No, I haven't. I saw the title. I thought it's tomorrow, actually. It shouldn't be tomorrow. It, no, no, it's not next week. It's two weeks away. It should be two weeks away. It might be, um, uh, it's another book club. It's on the 27th. So if you can get the book on that, or either the ebook or the regular book. Um, okay. I love, I've got a ton of her books. She's, um, she's a big storyteller and she basically goes in and does a research. And from um, your OD background, I think you'll find like you'll, the things she's talking about, I'm sure you've seen in organizations. Uh, so, yeah. We'll thoroughly love it. So, if you can join us, that'd be great. 